Hey guys, it's Jeff and uh, today we have a lot, a lot to talk about. Uh, WWDC 2019 on June 3rd is uh, quickly approaching, just a few weeks away, and uh, we are expected to see a complete overhaul to Apple's software side of things. Uh, specifically for macOS, we have iOS 13 coming. Uh, we have uh, a lot of changes to the Apple TV app, of course, given that we have uh, the Apple TV Plus service coming out. Out. So there's just a lot coming out on WWDC 2019 and specifically today we are going to be talking about iOS 13 because that is obviously very exciting for all of us who have iDevices that run iOS. So let's go ahead and talk about iOS 13 and talk about like 30 plus changes and new features that will be coming to this new version of iOS. This video is sponsored by MacPaw, the creators of Clean My Mac X. This is a program that I use almost every day to clean up junk files, protect my Mac from malware, and speed up my Mac to work like it did from day one. There's also a ton of other tools that you get with this program without any hassle whatsoever. So if you want to start the program I use for my Mac, check out the link down below to see more info and also to download it today. Okay, so quite possibly the most exciting change and uh, kind of new feature coming to iOS is dark mode. Dark mode has been a long anticipated feature that we have been asking, begging for at, from Apple uh, for the last couple of years and uh, we are finally going to be getting it in iOS 13. Now, specifically for the Mac in Mac OS, we do have a system-wide dark mode and that will be coming to iOS as well. So it's going to be system-wide, including all of the uh, apps made by Apple. So Apple will be configuring those as well, just like they've done the Stocks app already. We are going to see that move into the rest of their app categories. Okay, so the big question is how is all of this going to be managed? And of course there is going to be a setting within the settings app to control whether you have the light mode or dark mode enabled. And there will also be some customization options there as well. But we also have uh, access via the control center. So in this mockup, you can see that we go into the control center and then in the brightness menu where you see that slider, there will be a toggle for dark mode. So it will be activated quite quickly. You won't have to wait just a few seconds or maybe re reboot your phone, it's going to be immediate. Now, another feature that is going to come with dark mode is actually an automatic switching theme. We see this in Twitter where uh, at nighttime you can have a dark mode enabled and then during the daytime uh, you have a light mode. That will also be coming to iOS 13 where we will see uh, you know, uh, a light theme activated when it's the light out and then when there is uh, you know, no light out and it's kind of uh, setting into the nighttime, we will see a dark mode enabled. And of course, this will all be accessed uh, via the settings app so you can control if that happens or not. That is not going to be a uh, you know, setting that will be on all the time. Now also won't, won't, what won't be on all the time is dark mode. So if you guys don't like dark mode, any of you that uh, just really don't like it, uh, you will still have access to the light mode. So system-wide dark mode is not going to be standard. It's just going to be an added feature and added option. So guys, that was dark mode. And of course, uh, with this update to dark mode, uh, with this new feature, we will be seeing a lot, a lot of developers adding dark mode to their apps. There has already been a ton of uh, app developers adding dark mode to their apps already, but I expect to see a lot of your favorite apps having dark mode activated. So if you have any apps uh, from developers that you want to see dark mode in, go ahead, comment those down below, uh, your favorite apps that you want to see dark mode activated in. Now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is Find My iPhone. Uh, that is definitely a very handy app for all of us who have iDevices. Basically, it's an app, if you don't know, that allows us to uh, track and manage our phones uh, when we don't physically have them on our, um, on our person. So earlier this year, my iPhone was in fact stolen and I used Find My iPhone to turn on uh, a lost or stolen mode. And that was uh, basically allowing me to go ahead and track my device and uh, you know put an iCloud cloud lock on the device so that uh, anyone who accessed it would have to have my username and password to my iCloud to go ahead and use that device ever again. Now there is a lot of flaws within the Find My iPhone app and kind of controls and that is what is going to be modified here. So one, within the app UI, that is going to be changed drastically. So we're going to see a brand new UI, uh, which I expect to look extremely beautiful, but more on the uh, kind of software side of things where we're seeing a 
lot of functionality changes, we are going to see a major one. Now, when my iPhone got stolen, I went ahead and activated that lost and stolen mode, and the thieves were not able to access any information on my device, but they still have my device and they were able to actually turn my device off. Now, the new uh, kind of find my iPhone in iOS 13 will uh, actually not allow users to turn the device off when a, the uh, lost or stolen mode is activated. That is a huge feature and it is definitely much needed because if someone were to go ahead and steal your device right now on iOS 12 and you activated that lost or stolen mode, they can just go ahead and turn off your device without any password or anything like that. So I expect to see that if Find My iPhone is activated on an iOS 13 uh, device, you will have to enter your uh, passcode to your device or a specific passcode dedicated to Find My iPhone to go to basically go ahead and turn off the device, which I think is uh, definitely a feature that needs to be added. I think even when that lost or stolen mode is not activated, you should have to have a password to go ahead and turn off your device because that just protects your device even more and allows that LTE or Wi-Fi connection to be maintained uh, until the device is uh, you know, unlocked or um, the passcode is entered. Now, next up is the uh, Archaic Reminders app. That is definitely going to get a refresh here. And uh, I, for one, am personally uh, really excited for that because the Reminders app is basically a list form right now and it just looks very archaic. So the uh, basically report on the Reminders app is saying that we are going to see a new grid layout, which is going to look extremely beautiful. Of course, Apple is going to do it up with a new UI change. But in that grid uh, kind of layout, we are going to see a lot of reminders laid out to us in uh, reminders due today, scheduled reminders for the near future, maybe a couple days from now, uh, location-based reminders, and also flagged reminders. So that's really exciting to see kind of a new grid layout where uh, all of your reminders will be laid out in a much better configuration than they are now in that list form. And also we are going to see further integration with other apps, uh, kind of like easily integrate other apps to be able to use reminders uh, from those apps, and then also more integration with uh, the Siri Shortcuts app that Apple has de been developing over the past year. So I am really excited to see uh, reminders get a little bit better and especially with location-based uh, apps, I'm expecting that to be uh, kind of overhauled and revamped uh, so that location-based uh, reminders and everything like that is going to be a whole lot better for all of us. Now, just like dark mode, we are supposed to see some major changes to the UI of iOS 13, more specifically with the home layout. So the home layout right now is very, uh, I'd say boring. Uh, right now, you can't really move apps to where you want them. Everything is in a stuck configuration. You have to have that home screen that has all the apps on it. It's just a mess. So with the new layout system in iOS 13, we are expected to see some more customizable options. So basically there will be uh, widgets added to the home page, so you will actually be able to select from kind of like a list of widgets just like you have in the control center and place those onto your home screen. So maybe uh, the time, the date, um, some health data, uh, some you know other uh, screen time data, whatever you want to put as a widget on your home uh, kind of layout, you will be able to do that. I know it's a lot like Android where uh, you can have widgets kind of placed wherever you want, but Apple users have been asking for this for quite a long time and I definitely think Apple should go ahead and uh, you know, oblige them and add that ability. Now with that ability, we will also be able to see uh, customizable app positions. So you will be able to finally put your apps wherever you want on the screen. I know that's a long awaited feature uh, since like the first version of uh, iOS and it is definitely coming in iOS 13. Now, one more thing with the home layout and it's not really having to do with the home layout, it's actually the lock screen. Uh, we are supposed to be seeing an always on display uh, specifically for the next generation iPhone. But for this generation, of iPhone and even the last where we saw an OLED panel on the iPhone 10 and then now the 10s and 10s Max, uh, we are definitely expecting to see an always on display. It is possible with an OLED screen simply because um, you know it doesn't activate the full panel of light and that uh, is not wasting the battery when an always on display is activated. So I'm actually fully expecting to see an always on display coming in iOS 13 and being able to um, you know have access through the iPhone 10s, 10s Max and as well the iPhone 10. So definitely look for that when you see beta one come to our devices, uh, you know, June 3rd.
Okay, so next up is the Files app, and the Files app definitely needs an overhaul. Uh, the UI will obviously be overhauled because with iOS 13, we're going to be you know seeing a brand new UI. But specifically with the uh, functionality of the Files app, we are set to see some improvements. So in the Finder app right now uh, for macOS, you can go ahead and access data from a MacBook Pro to the Mac back there. So I can go ahead and see all of my documents and everything like that um, on my Mac and then transfer those to my MacBook Pro. Well, that functionality has been set to be coming to the iPad. It was actually uh, set to be coming to the iPad uh, in, uh, I think, I think it was iOS 12. It wasn't iOS 11. In iOS 12, that functionality was there in the betas, but Apple actually removed it, and we don't have that functionality anymore. But specifically with iOS 13, you will be able to do that, and there is more. So right now, if I go ahead and plug in an SD card to my iPad uh, Pro, I am not able to access any of the data on this removable storage. Well, in iOS 13, that is going to change. So if I'm, let's say, editing a video on iMovie with my my iPad Pro, I can go ahead and take the footage from this SD card and put it onto my iPad and then access that footage and use it for iMovie. Right now, you have actually have to do it through iCloud Drive and uh, you know just a whole lot of other options that are uh, not very good. And specifically with other apps, uh, you know where you can edit movies, photos, and everything like that, you definitely want to be able to just plug in one of these SD cards and be able to access the data off of that. Now, I'm not quite sure if uh, you know there will be enough power to uh, power, let's say, a hard drive, but definitely an SSD will be able to uh, be accessed via the iPad Pro. I'm not sure about um, you know any other devices with the Lightning cable that is yet to be announced, but specifically with USB-C, we are set to be um, you know seeing access to removable storage. So that is super exciting, especially for you Pro uh, users who you know edit content and uh, definitely need access to removable storage because that's a part of your daily workflow. Okay, so next up we're talking about the Mail app and the Mail app, uh, like the Reminders app, is definitely a little bit archaic. Uh, we're definitely seeing, uh, you know, improvements to the UI in iOS 13 for the Mail app specifically, but we will also be seeing kind of an overhaul to how the Mail app works. It is said that we are supposed to be seeing the Mail app turn more into uh, what Gmail does with their mail. So we'll see different categories like marketing, um, shopping, and you know other categories such as that being brought to the Mail app. So there will basically or essentially be a better organization within the mail app and categorize different emails into different places. Now, I specifically am really excited for this next one. We are set to see a, a kind of read later queue, which will allow you to have a, a dedicated folder for uh, any emails that you want to read later, but you just can't read now, but they're super important. So I'm excited for that simply because there's a lot of emails that come throughout the day that I can't really take the time to read, but I definitely don't want to forget them in the kind of long list of emails that I get. So that will allow you to put them into a folder, but you know, that will, once you read them, they will move out of that folder and uh, you know, be available in your inbox. So that is super exciting. And I definitely am really looking forward to kind of an overhaul to the mail app because that is definitely needing uh, kind of some improvement within iOS 13. Now, really quickly on the iMessage update, obviously uh, with iOS 13, we're going to see some UI changes, but obviously we are going to see some more, uh, you know, an emoji coming to our devices. We see that uh, basically with every major version of iOS. And then also we are going to be seeing some more customization with Memoji. Now Memoji, I don't usually use it all the time. I use it very rarely, but having all of that customization is really cool. And I do expect to see some further improvement with AR and kind of all of that jazz uh, when we're talking about Animoji and Memoji. So definitely be on the lookout for some improvements to those two features. I definitely think Apple is going to push those through as AR is becoming bigger and bigger with Apple. And, uh, you know, they definitely want to highlight uh, the best features that they have with AR and those being Animoji and Memoji. Okay, so next up is Screen Time. And Screen Time has definitely been a great addition into iOS. It allows parents to uh, manage their kids' uh, uses time on iOS and uh, just allows them to you know take more control over their uh, kids phones but for adults like us it allows us to give uh, you know to see more information about how we are using our devices it gives us how many notifications
notifications we're getting throughout the day, how many times we pick up our device, and how long we're spending on uh, kind of each app and each app category. Now, there are going to be some improvements coming to screen time. One of those is going to be uh, basically more available data. So we're going to be seeing more available data and more accurate data uh, for our screen time usage. Now, the second thing is going to be uh, further detailed data. So it will basically explain, uh, you know, for example, how loud we are listening to our music because that is an important factor. And uh, that will be an important factor for parents who want to uh, basically manage how loud uh, you know, of music their kids are uh, listening to. So that will allow you to, I expect to, you know, see a lot of controls within screen time. So that might allow the parent to basically lower the volume, uh, the max volume on a child's uh, device directly from screen time. Basically, I'm expecting screen time is it's more of a parental feature to have more controls for parents to limit certain things directly from screen time. So definitely stay tuned for more news on that. I will be doing a full feature on the new screen screen time in iOS 13 and kind of all of the improvements that were made to that uh, menu system because screen time was definitely a great addition in iOS 11 and I think Apple is going to make further improvements on that. Now guys, that is all of the new features and kind of app changes that we are set to see within iOS 13, but we are definitely expecting to see some more new apps made by Apple. Apple has continuously been bringing more apps like the uh, Siri shortcuts and uh, further improvements to other apps. And we're expecting to see some ad additional apps being brought by Apple simply because there's just more and more features that are needed within iOS 13. So stay tuned for more news on uh, you know more apps being brought to brought to us by Apple. And uh, yeah, that is basically it with iOS 13, but we haven't even talked about speed and performance yet. We've just been talking about new features, some major changes and everything like that. But what about speed and performance? So between iOS 11 and iOS 12, there wasn't really much of a change in regards to the UI, but we did see a huge bump in speed and performance. Obviously the new devices are way faster than the others. That's not really a huge surprise. That's always been the case, but we actually did see speed and performance go up on devices like the iPhone 5S. So even devices that have been years and years old are definitely speeding up. And we saw a downward trend uh, between iOS 9, 10, and 11 of basically older devices getting slower and slower and Apple kind of flipped the switch with iOS 12 and made those devices a whole lot faster. So speed and performance were a major focus on iOS 12, but unfortunately stability was not. Stability is very hard to manage for Apple and in iOS 13, they are saying they're going to make this the most stable and still fast version of iOS possible. Now, the way they're going to do this is obviously focus more on bugs and everything like that. Uh, developers and public beta testers will obviously be a huge part of that, but they are expecting for bugs uh, to be found in uh, you know betas to be very scarce. So they're trying to make the beta to official release process as, as bug free as possible. And that is simply because they don't want developers to be developing their apps around a very buggy uh, UI or very buggy version of iOS. So that is a huge improvement by Apple and I'm definitely going to hold them to it. Hopefully we see a less buggy iOS 13 versus iOS 12 and I will definitely be following up on that because I have had a lot of bugs in iOS 12 and I want to see something different happen with iOS 13. Okay guys, that was all of the news with iOS 13. I know it's a lot to digest, but there's just a lot going on. And that was just iOS 13. We haven't talked about watchOS, macOS and all that. So if you want to uh, basically get the latest scoop on all of that, make sure to get subscribed and also hit the bell button to get updates on when that content is released. Now we will be seeing all of this, all of this coming to us June 3rd, 2019 at the first day of WWDC, where the keynote will basically present iOS 13, macOS, uh, new versions of tvOS, and all that jazz uh, coming to our Apple devices. So definitely stay tuned for more news on that. We will have a live stream of WWDC 2019 that you will not want to miss. So thank you guys for watching this video. I definitely appreciate all of your support and hopefully you get subscribed and also hit the bell button to get updates as soon as our content is released covering all of the news with WWDC. Again, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in our next video. Peace.